Hello everyone, I'm Joel Anderson, director at Archway Gallery. On behalf of our 33 member artists at Texas' longest running artist owned and operated gallery, welcome to our 12th annual juried exhibition. Each year we invite local Houston area artists to submit up to two pieces to be considered by a local art expert and we partner with a local charity and that 50% of the proceeds of the sales go to that charity with the remaining 50% going to the artist. We prided ourselves in that we were one of the last uh, exhibitions in Houston that had the artists physically bring in their pieces to the gallery for physical inspection by the, the juror. Well, this year, as you can imagine, that plan went out the window with the COVID-19 pandemic. We shifted to uh, online submissions and not without a few hiccups actually, so we do thank the artists for bearing with us as we learn new ways of doing things. This year we had 125 artists submit 235 pieces of which the juror selected just 38. We do have a physical show in that we invited the artists to cautiously bring in the pieces so that we can hang and display them in the gallery. And we also have everything online in a virtual show and uh, in our store on our website, archwaygallery.com. And throughout the month, we'll be uh, showcasing these pieces on our Facebook page and Instagram posts. So be sure and follow us there. Regarding the, the physical show, um, be aware that during the Harris County Code Red, uh, we are operating only by appointment only. So to arrange an appointment with less than 10 people, everybody wearing masks and um, observing social distancing, send us an email at info at archwaygallery.com and we'll set something up with you. If and when, hopefully soon, uh, we return to the level orange, we will resume our Friday, Saturday, Sunday, one to five hours with no appointment necessary, and by appointment um, only the remainder of the days of the week. Now, we have a couple of hardworking members who do this for us every year. Uh, Liz Consa Spencer and Becky Soria. And let me turn things over first to Liz Consa Spencer, who will introduce our uh, uh, charity partner this, this year. Liz, over to you. Hi, everybody. My name is Liz Consa Spencer, and with Becky Soria, I am co chair of the 12th annual juried exhibition here at Archway Gallery. Many thanks to our juror, Wayne Gilbert and to our charity partner, the Houston Junior Forum. Houston Junior Forum is a 75-year-old organization. It supports a number of philanthropic endeavors here in Houston. It has a wide reach in the community with over 400 members. They operate a resale shop on Rutland in the Heights, and they, the, the good that they do here in our community is widespread and well-known. We are honored to work with them this year. 50% of sales from the exhibition will benefit Houston Junior Forum. The works that are in the gallery that you will see uh, are available for sale. 50% of those proceeds go to the exhibiting artists, 50% to Houston Junior Forum. At this time, I'd like to introduce Linda West, president of Houston Junior Forum. Hello. I'm Linda West, president of the Houston Junior Forum, a 400 member strong women's service organization providing charitable services for Houston's children, youth, women, and senior adults. Over the years, Houston Junior Forum has owned and operated the Community House Preschool, the Recreation Center for Older Adults, the Senior Guidance Directory, and the HJF Resale Shop. Today, members volunteer over 15,000 hours annually at 15 different nonprofits serving the Houston community. HJF is honored to be the charity partner for Archway Gallery's 12th annual juried exhibition. Proceeds from this exhibition will support the Houston Junior Forum College Scholarship Program, 
the HJF Community Grants Program, and the HJF Resale Shops Community Initiatives. Thank you to the 30 plus artists who collectively own and operate Archway Gallery. Our members are excited to view the exhibition and look forward to visiting the gallery soon. Hello everybody. I'm here to present Wayne Gilbert, who is our juror of this year, uh, juror the exhibition. And I'm very, very pleased to present him uh, for the 2020 annual jewelry exhibition at Archway Gallery. Gilbert is a gallerist, an artist, and a patron of the arts, who has been working towards expanding the arts in Houston and helping artists to show their work in his beautiful gallery, G-Spot. Holding an MA from Rice University and an undergraduate degree in painting, Paired with a minor in art history from the University of Houston, Gilbert is a well-known artist himself who has been using the cremated human remains in his paintings to create very strong works. His intent is to question the phenomenon of art as it relates to humanity and vice versa. He investigates and questions the academic substance of art as it integrates into theory and critical analysis. Gilbert has been a speaker at Bard College, Annandale on the Houston, Rutgers University, and Texas Tech. Has curated many exhibitions, among them Trujillo, Peru, Santiago, Cuba, Salwedale, Germany, Seattle, Washington, Marfa, Texas, and Arlington, to name a few. On a personal note, Wayne, with his lovely wife, Beverly, have a fabulous home dedicated to the arts in every way, with art all over the place, the space, the walls, you can call it a private museum, showing the time and the relation they have with the art world. We at the gallery are very thankful and very honored to have Wayne Gilbert as our juror this year. Thank you, Wayne. Archway Gallery has been promoting this jury exhibition for 12 years with the idea of coupling both the arts and a charitable organization together and with a mission to help unrepresented artists through Texas and help a charitable organization in Houston. This year, we chose the Houston Junior Forum. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Wayne Gilbert, and Archway was kind enough to select me as a juror for this 2020 exhibition. And as we all know, it's during the COVID era, which makes everything different. So we won't be opening a uh, human opening, as I, I, I know now, perhaps if things change between now and the end of the show, they might have an opening, but at this point in time, it's all gonna be digital. So we wanna welcome everybody to the digital exhibition. Uh, I would be remiss to say that, to begin with, I wanna point out that when I was asked to be a juror, I've been fortunate enough to be uh, uh, a gallery owner for at least 20 years or more. I've curated shows around the world uh, and also I'm an artist and have been making art for a long time. So what I bring to the show is sort of a combination of those three realities uh, to make my selections. Uh, one of my feelings about art, having observed it for so long and seen so many people involved in it, that I give everybody that makes a piece of art equal credit. I don't like think to myself, well, because I didn't particularly like a piece that it's any better or worse than the piece I like. Because for me, anybody that dedicates their life to making art has already dove out into a world of discretionary reality. Because this, you know, it's just something that we, you, if you do it for a long time, you realize that you have to love it to do it. So that's, for, that's what I wanna make sure that everybody doesn't feel like just because they're not in the show that their work wasn't as good as somebody else's work, because it would be unfair for me to say that because had you had a different juror, their show might be in the work, in the show, their work might be in the show and, and, and not this. So getting back to the thing that, that is, that I chose this show primarily because 
uh, the pieces varied enough to where I wanted to make sure that I had sort of a visionary element in the many different aspects of the art world, uh, um, conceptualism, rea realism, abstract, um, sculpture, all of the different things. I wanted to make sure that I was able to get a nice piece for a lot of those different worlds. So I chose the Ping Wang as our number one piece and it was just, it was abstract but it wasn't so flowingly abstract that it was like a lot of the, from my viewpoint of watching art a long time, you can categorize the way different groups of artists make art and it, that if you did shows sometimes, even the people they elevate to fame, if you put a lot of other people's pieces in there that had never been seen before and people didn't know who they were, they would look a lot alike but different because each artist is different. But he put together enough little clippets of different abstract pieces and when they hit the surface, uh, they just fell into a place that I kept coming back to and it seemed to fit really well for me. So I liked it enough to do it. And you, you, when you look at the pieces, again, that I selected, uh, that was kind of the way it was with them as well. Uh, part of my whole idea about art is because it is a discipline, meaning that it has to be, you have to stop and do it. And some people stop and do it real fast. Some people stop and do it. It takes grinding amounts of time to do it. I oftentimes will give a little more oomph to those that take really a long time because I know just how grueling it can be to stay with a piece of art. So that was my first selection and now we'll go to number two. Number two was to see a compost and it is womb. Uh, as you can see, it's an oil painting and it's a disciplined piece. She had a, what I think to be a pretty strong capacity to paint in a smooth way and come out with a nice image. And uh, I'm always impressed by people that have the patience to do a really serious oil painting. Uh, and looking at a lot of the other ones that were also equally close as good as hers in, in, from my viewpoint, um, probably perhaps as good, but, but she just seemed to have the right coloring and all. And I like the idea of womb, the way it, that fish, anyway, it was just something I enjoyed, kind of the fact that the painting when she put all the paint in the right place with her reflections and everything that they worked out really nicely. So I, I talked that. And then we have Joe Zider, uh, where I am, and it's etched glass. Um, uh, it's an etched mirror, and if you, you can't quite see all of the little elements uh, that are part of this, but it looked time consuming and difficult, and these people uh, trying to crawl over this fence, uh, this barbed wire fence, uh, and it had kind of a serious melancholy feeling of being either stuck somewhere in the world that you wanted to get out of and go somewhere else, or you could be a, you know, one of the uh, poor people down at the border being held down there, or, I mean, you, one of the things that I enjoyed about it is you could use it imagery to go to so many different places of of difficulty and where being captured beyond your ability to do anything about it and the amount of struggle necessary to try to get away from it or get out of it or whatever. Anyway, and so I really enjoyed the, uh, the discipline in it too because it looked awfully time consuming and, and hard to make and in the world we're living in today with so many different aspects of, I'm gonna use the word social disease, disease like lack of ease, uh, that I wanted to, to think that she would be well suited to bring that out a little bit. So anyway, I liked it a lot. Um, and our honorable mentions, um, Laura Spector, you might want to get Laura. Laura's a, one, of the, a, one of our uh, honorable mentions. Uh, I know Laura and her husband. They have had an exhibition in my gallery in the past. Uh, and uh, I thought that she had done a really nice job in her thinking about this uh, magnifying glass in front of this person. So it kind of had a way of kind of going into the idea of sitting there making a painting, but it magnifying it into your brain and getting it into a bigger place. That, and then the, the, then the difficulty of going on and making the piece. So anyway, I liked it a lot. So. Okay, Margaret Howell is this piece here that is a photograph, and I realize the amount of 
uh, I could say, digital manipulation uh, in this piece, and she's apparently taken a photograph and just kind of wrapped it around. It looks to me like kind of wrapped it around until it became all four sides and then goes back. But I like the dimension, the physicality of the dimension going back, and because my wife and I own a digital imaging business, a computer-generated imaging, animation, etc. We make our livings by doing manipulation in photography, so I have a fairly clear idea of, of the difficulty and how to make this, and it, I just thought it had a nice aesthetic look to it, so I like okay. it. I like uh, Gary Watson, I was an honorable mention. It, I just can't even tell you why I liked it, but it did. It was this little sinister looking eyeball that we all have to live with in our whole lives or around other people. And then all of a sudden, somebody's looking at us, and you know, it's, and it's it's a mask. And obviously, we're all living in a mask today, with our little eyeballs looking out at everybody, wondering who is, who. Are they? You know, we could all be like robbers and stuff nowadays. Who knows? You know. So anyway, I liked it a lot. I liked the black and white photography because, again, uh, our business started out 40. My wife and I's business out 40, 42 years ago. We started business. And she was a retoucher, photographic retoucher, of which Liz knew back for years. Uh, and she began our business by etching a negative, black and white negative, in order to uh, make it something so that the advertising agencies could use it. So I'm very familiar with photography. And so uh, I liked it because of my history. There you go. Richard Stewart's initiator, I liked, I can't, it's like a lot of the types of sculptures that are made like these. I can't always tell people why I like them, but I like them because somehow it had kind of construct that I enjoyed seeing for reasons that is even hard to me. It had a kind of a nice, tight mechanical feel to it. I couldn't quite tell whether it should have been a cannon or whether or not it was a, 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 a pulley or you name it, it could have been anything. And so I kind of just liked the fact that he was able to take these various pieces, put them together, and it stood well by itself. That's what I liked. I liked Michael Abraham's piece, The Moment She Decided to Leave, for lots of reasons. Number one, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be married to a marvelous, beautiful woman for 43 years now, and I would never want her to leave. But before I married her, there were a couple of times when the moment she wanted to leave happened to me, and I'll never forget those moments. And so he brought back a great memory of the past when I was young, and so I liked it. And then again with it, too, I enjoyed the colorful dynamics and the little uh, images inside of one another. So uh, it, was a, it, was a, it, was a, it was just a good feeling about life in general. So I enjoyed that. All right, great. Uh, do you want to say any closing words? About well, yeah, and in closing, I'd like to say that all of the stuff I just got through saying don't pay any attention to because it's just my thoughts on the matter and it's not going to have anything to do in the long term except that I hope you continue to make art, love making the art, and when you stop loving it, stop making it because this is a really vital part of human life is to have this stuff around when everything else might be a little dark. You can always look at some art and it'll make it light up a little bit. Thank you. Okay. All right. Everybody's